if life has ever thrown you a curveball and you really had no idea how you were going to get out of it, this video is for you. We are day seven, I think, of being in hospital. If you've been following along, you know that we just had our sweet baby girl, Colleen, our eighth baby. So she started having a sniffly nose, but I wasn't too, too worried about it. But then a few days later, I noticed that her, her abdomen was having retractions is what the word is. So basically right in the middle of her abdomen, you could kind of see like the muscles working really hard and pushing in and out and in and out. And that's when I was really alarmed and was just like, we better get this checked out. Things progressed very quickly once we came to um, the hospital, I'll be honest with you. I thought that they were just going to look at her and then be like, okay, you just have to monitor this. But it was pretty evident that immediate action needed to be taken. They admitted her and put her on an oxygen flow. So she has a little tube in her nose. Watching a child suffer is probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to um, encounter as a parent. Now, there's only been one other time, very seriously, where a child was um, hospitalized for several days. But this is the very first time that um, I have been without a baby, especially, like meaning my baby has been separated from me. So uh, in order to manage all the other kids at home, we have been taking turns. Um, so Josh has spent a few days here in the hospital while I have gone home and done like, you know, the whole routine of um, <laughs> having children, <laughs> um, getting them off to all the places they need to be. But I thought I would just offer a few tips on what to do when life throws you some curveballs. Like when you are feeling just like, what the heck? Like, and how am I going to get through this? Um, because I have been feeling all the emotions. There is a totally different level of helplessness that happens, I think, when you have a child who is sick. Um, because especially at this totally, like, they're just so young and they're so fragile. You know, when an older kid gets sick, they can tell you what's going on, they can tell you what hurts. But when little tiny babies get sick, there is just something so traumatic, to be honest about it, and a true feeling of helplessness. And I'll be honest with you, when I was here the first night and people were saying things like spinal tap is gonna be needed, intubation will be needed, I was like, oh my gosh, like, what is happening and I remember thinking I wish there was someone out there who could speak specific hope into me right now like specific hope meaning um, your child has this kind of disease and here's what we experienced and here's how we got through it and so that's why I really wanted to sit down and make this video because I didn't even know first of all I didn't want to google because I knew that it would be awful and I would just you know google myself into even more anxiety but um, really, like, I think what people need in these situations particularly is hope. Like, hope that you can make it through this. Hope that um, you are not alone in your struggle and in your suffering. Hope that what you're feeling is very normal. I had so many thoughts and concerns and I really just, um, I wanted to offer some thoughts on what to do when you feel like there is absolutely no hope and life has thrown you like the biggest curveball. But first I have to go pump. <laughs> Stand by. So nursing is, or sorry, pumping is something that I haven't really had to do that much to be honest with you. When I was um, a first time mom, I was given a pump that was battery operated. <laughs> And it was like this dinky little thing that went like, wah, wah, wah. like it, and it didn't, it was very challenging to be relaxed enough to pump, I found it back then. Um, anyways, and so then with my second child, she would not take a bottle, like just nothing. Ever, I remember I went through so many brands, I spent probably like over a hundred dollars on different bottles that you know, we're supposed to be exactly like the boo, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I kind of like gave up after my second. I think my other children like, of course, have had the occasional bottle when they were an infant, but to be honest, I remember it was just so hard when 
my second child wouldn't take a bottle I, 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 I remember not just not being that like inclined to do it um, so so yeah so this is a new experience for me sometimes when I'm nursing I like sing songs to the tempo that is the breast pump so for example uh, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Uh, 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 staying alive. Do, 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 do. Anyways, I gotta keep myself entertained somehow. <laughs> okay, milk has been pumped. So the first thing I would say when you are going through something like a child being ill or any other situation where it just feels like life has thrown you a total curveball. Um, is allow yourself to feel all the feelings so like don't feel bad if you just want to be like this is awful and this sucks and don't feel bad if you just want to cry and all you are um, able to do is cry um, I find that I can be really hard on myself like way too hard on myself and um, and not allow myself almost like not give myself permission to feel feelings um, and instead just be hard on myself like you should be like a lot more positive about this Lisa or whatever like so I would say that's like, probably the first thing is to just resist the um, the urge I guess or um, uh, to, ju to judge whatever feelings you're having just allow yourself to feel all the feelings it's also so important like I'm reminding myself of this right now, how much my hormones and my sleep are being impacted because I just had a child and like I'm still kind of in recovery physically from having a baby. So anyways, that's why we've been very conscientious about taking turns here in the hospital and um, making sure we both get good nights of sleep. So just doing everything you can to make sure that um, you're eating and you're drinking a lot of water and you're sleeping as much as you can um, given the circumstances. So all these things are really important. Just allow yourself to feel whatever and do your best to physically take care of yourself. I'm gonna physically take care of myself and go get something to eat, oh my word. This is like the prettiest little spot to have a quiet moment and just, you know, have my, my yogurt and just <laughs> get some sun on my face, which is so nice. So one thing I find really important to remember for me personally is to not stay in the heart forever. So once like you've acknowledged it and you um, allow yourself to feel the emotions of whatever it is, pain, anger, resentment, whatever, frustration, um, definitely don't suppress those feelings. But me personally, I just find that if I stay in those feelings for too long, nothing good comes from it if you know what I mean so I find that once I've given it its space and time and for me it's not very much time like I, I just need to kind of like hear it but then I really like to um, start to look for more hope <laughs> um, and I just think this also too has like direct correlation in patterns the brain starts to focus on um, and so for me getting out of the stinking thinking and like woe is me and whatnot because I can be really good at staying in pity party forever I just find for me it doesn't really serve me and so to get out of that um, as reasonably quick as possible I find is um, just a better option for me so I'm back in the room with basically the best news Colleen has been on a high flow oxygen since she got here on the first day and now she's doing well enough that she can be reduced to what they call low flow so this is a step in the right direction and it means that we're one step closer to getting home so another thing that I think is so important in this conversation is this whole just notion of accepting the reality. I have a tendency to sometimes be in a bit of denial. <laughs> and I will put a blog post um, for Colleen's birth in the notes below, just so you can understand how in denial I can be. But I think it's a better approach to accept that this is the reality. So for example, in my case, I kept fighting, I guess, with myself, being like, she's gonna come home tomorrow. She's gonna come home tomorrow. She's gonna come home tomorrow. But the reality, and the doctors were fairly transparent about it, was that this is a long go in the hospital. It's gonna be days, like we're not, we're not out of here anytime soon. I honestly was just in a lot of denial about that. But I do think it's better to just simply accept the reality. And I think that 
really helps with your general peace and with also formulating a plan that is a little bit more realistic. I think in my head I was like, she's going to be coming home tomorrow, so therefore I need to make no other arrangements for my other kids or for food or what have you, and that just doesn't really serve you. And so I think accepting the reality for what it is, honestly, I think can help with your general peace and state of mind. So right now I'm going to accept the reality that my husband and I are going to switch off soon and I'm going to go home and be with my other kids. So my husband and I just did the trade off. I'm in the car. Bless his heart. That husband of mine is a good man. Ugh, and he just reminded me of something so important. I was feeling really just like down and feeling like Oh my gosh, like we had so many like plans for these two weeks. I had like webinars scheduled. I had all kinds of things. And I was just telling him how I felt like such a failure. And he reminded me he was like, success right now is like snuggling Colleen. And success right now is um, being present to our other kids. And like that is all. Success right now can just look like getting dressed and. I think this is something that I struggle with all the time as a, as a high achiever. Like I think about all the things that I haven't done, but it's funny. It really connected with me when he reminded me of this, that like success in times like this can be just getting out of bed. Success can be changing a diaper. I think when life throws you curveballs, you really need to be reminded of who you really are. This phrase is something that has gotten me through um, so many things. To be reminded of who you really are is such a gift. And so you need to surround yourself with people or you need to call out to these people who will help remind you of who you really are. This is really essential, I think, in times like this. And so for me, my husband is like that. He reminds me of who I really am. I have some wonderful friends who remind me of who I really am. Um, and who I really am is someone who is capable of hard things. I am capable of hard things and I think that's it's incredible what our mind does to our feelings which then impact our actions which then impact our reality um, and so I think protecting your thoughts and being surrounded truly by people who remind you of who you really are is really important in times like this Joseph yeah are you excited I'm home Yay, mommy! <laughs> oh, thanks, Joseph. I'm very excited to be home too. I'm excited that you're yes. home too. Oh, Me, yeah. we too. miss you. Me Aww, too. Oh, oh, Rosie, I missed you too. <laughs> James, you guys, do you miss mommy? Yeah. Oh, what are you doing, James? <laughs> Joseph and James, are you ready for a story? Are you ready for a story? Yeah. Oh my doggy does. There's something in my eye. What's in your eye? It, it was white in my eye. Oh really? Hey, ah, oh, white in my eye. Oh. <laughs> Guys, these are so cute, these things. The little signs. Can you help me find my wallet? Your wallet? <laughs> Since when do you have a wallet? Good night, love you. Love you too. Okay, Rosie, are you ready for some talks? Yeah. Come. <laughs> hey, are you ready for it? Yeah. Are you wearing pajamas? Uh, yeah. I like how your glasses match your shirt. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hope you sleep very well, Rose. Okay. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. in your bed. And now that my kids are in bed um, and my dad is here and he can hold the fort while I'm gone, probably the most helpful thing I think that can be done um, when life throws you a curveball is to pray. For me, prayer has been um, honestly just the most essential way <laughs> I, I, I get through hard things. I'll be honest with you, like I don't always feel consolation and comfort when I pray, but I have a very strong faith in the sense that I definitely don't feel like I'm alone. Experience has just shown me that I'm not alone. <laughs> Experience has shown me that 
I have a Father in Heaven who loves me very much and that He has great plans for me, plans for my welfare and not for woe, and plans for a future full of hope. And these are words that I cling to. In the hospital room with Colleen, I definitely heard it whispered in my ear. Cannings can do hard things and you can do even harder things with me. The other thing that I think is so helpful to remember is what if this is actually for you? Like not being done to you, but do, being done for you. I remember I used to hear that expression and I would be like, that's such a weird way to think of it, but hear me out. Like what if there is a lesson that you are supposed to gain from this? What if there is a um, experience that is going to prepare you for something in the future or is going to make you stronger or is going to change your perspective on things a little bit. This is another one that I think is really hard to remember in the moment but with a little bit of hindsight can be really um, helpful uh, because I don't think that suffering is for nothing. I really don't. I believe that when there are hard things that happen truly we're not alone when they're happening and they're not worthless. Um, this is very much informed by my faith, very much informed by my past experiences with dealing with hard things in the past and then coming out the other end and feeling so much stronger and so much wiser and being prepared to do things in the future. So I really do think that there is always a gift and there's always something to gain um, from a difficult experience and it's really hard to remember at the moment. but easier to remember when you have the experience of then surviving something and becoming stronger. If you're going through something hard right now, will you let me know in the comments below and I will pray for you and I'll pray specifically for um, your situation and for your intention. I just want to let you know that you are not alone and you are seen and your suffering matters and you matter. And if you are interested in more videos on doing hard things, I'm going to link for you a couple other videos right here in the cards and I will see you on the other side.